So here we're working with air modeled as an ideal gas and it's entering through a combustion chamber and we're given the pressure as well as the temperature. And we're also told that it's entering through a rectangular duct and we're given the width and the height of the entrance of that duct. As well as the mass flow rate we're given over here in pounds per hour and we have to find the velocity in feet per second. So as always, here's the schematic that we're gonna be using to kind of make sense of this problem. So you have a rectangular duct and you're given that it's a four foot by five foot entrance and it's gonna go into this combustion chamber. So let me just title this up as the combustion chamber. And we're told that the air entering in, into this duct has 20 PSI of pressure, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and a mass flow rate of 830,000 pounds per hour. So our job here is to find the velocity of that air and it's going to be some number in feet per second. So to find this velocity, we're going to use the relation of velocity is equal to mass flow rate times specific volume divided by area. Now the mass flow rate is given to us, and the area can be easily calculated since we have the width and the height. However, the specific volume is going to be pretty much what we're looking to solve for in this problem. So we're, again, we're told that it's an ideal gas model, or the air can be modeled as an ideal gas. So we'll go ahead and use the relation of PV equals MRT. So PV equals MRT. And this is a rate, so we can make this into a rate as well. But notice that you can also use the expression of PV, a specific volume is equal to RT, and this simplifies it a bit in that you can just automatically solve for your specific volume. And you have a specific volume is equal to gas constant times temperature divided by pressure. Now this is pretty easy since we have the temperature and we have the pressure, but we do need that gas constant R. So recall that the gas constant R is equal to, so R is equal to the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass. So R over m and that gas constant is just equal to 1545 and that's foot pound per pound mole degree Rankine so it's kind of a weird unit here and you're going to divide that by the molar mass of air which is just 28.97 that's me pounds per pound mole So now all we have to do is divide the pound mass by pound mass and they cancel out and the pounds cancel out with the pounds up here and you're going to be left with feet per degree Rankine. So R can be simplified into 53.33 feet per degree Rankine. So now we just plug this back into our ideal gas equation. We have V1 or specific volume at the entrance is equal to RT1 divided by the pressure, and that's going to be equal to 53.33 feet per degree Rankine times the temperature. So the temperature is going to be 530 degrees Rankine because you need to convert this 70 degrees into Fahrenheit, which is going to be 530 degrees Rankine. In case if you didn't know, all you have to do is add 460 degrees to get from F to R. So we're gonna close this bracket here and we're gonna divide by the pressure. So the pressure is 20 pounds per inch squared, famously referred to as PSI. But obviously we have feet up top in the numerator, so we need to convert this into feet. So to do that, uh, we're gonna do 144 inches squared per foot squared you'll find that these inch squares cancel out and you're gonna have pounds per cubic or per square foot. Now, if we do this all out in a calculator, we have 9.8142 feet cubed per pound, which is the correct unit for a specific volume. So now back to our velocity equation here. So now we have that specific volume and 
we can calculate the area as well pretty easily. Now, the mass flow rate's given to us, it's given to us as 830,000 pounds per hour. However, the volume, or the velocity rather, is supposed to be in feet per second, so we do need to convert this 830,000 pounds per hour into pounds per second. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in our equation here. So if you set this equal to 830,000, that's going to be pounds per hour. And I'm going to add that conversion factor right now. So one hour has 3,600 seconds. So that's an S, not a 5, for seconds. And this is going to be your mass flow rate right over here. And that's going to mean pounds per second. Now we multiply by that uh, specific volume, which was 9.814. That was feet cubed per pound. And we're going to divide all of this by the area, which is simply going to be 4 feet by 5 feet. Now when we do the cancellations out on the units, we have 2 feet on the bottom, so feet squared. And you have a foot cubed on the top, so that turns into just a foot. This pound cancels out with this pound. This hour cancels out with this hour, and you're going to be left with feet per second. So when you plug all this into your calculator, you'll have the velocity is equal to 113.13 feet per second.